Okay, Dick. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to dive right in. What we're going to talk about today is Bitbucket pipelines, and it's important to note that Bitbucket pipelines is available only in the cloud version um, of Bitbucket. So if you're using Bitbucket server, you will not have access to Bitbucket pipelines. If you're using the server, you're going to use the Bamboo product, which provides the CI/CD capabilities on in a server environment. Um, and if you are doing um, highly complex uh, builds and deployments, you might want to use Bamboo even if you're using Bit Bitbucket Cloud. But I wanted to share with you today some of the really nice features that you can get, and you can get them very, very quickly and, and inexpensively using Bitbucket Cloud and the pipeline capability. So if you're using Bitbucket for your source code control and you're doing that in the cloud, you have access to, to the pipeline capability. You may need to turn it on on a repository by repository basis. And I'll, we'll take a quick look at how that's done. At the end, I'm going to do a little demonstration for you so you can see it in practice. Um, but let's get started right from the beginning. Um, just a level set, when we talk about continuous integration, continuous delivery, what are we actually talking about? So what you see in this slide is the flow from left to right, planning, coding, building, and so on, all the way to the point where you deploy and operate your software. This is, you know, it doesn't really matter how you're doing software development, you should be going through all of these different steps. And the goal of both Agile and on top of that, DevOps is to move you from plan to operate as quickly as possible on pieces of value that you're going to deliver to your customer. If you're, what you're delivering is not valuable to the customer, there's no point in doing it. So we're always talking about what are we, how are we delivering value to our customer and how are we doing this as quickly as possible while maintaining the highest possible quality and consistency that we want to deploy. Um, and the idea is to do this in a way that when we go and deploy it and operate it, it is um, we reduce the number of failures, we increase the stability, and we reduce the cost um, and the effort needed in order to actually do that. So the key to this is you see these circles of continuous integration and continuous delivery. Continuous integration is the idea that we, we write our code, we run some kind of a build process, and then we run our tests. And our tests were going to tell us whether or not the code that we've just been working on uh, succeeds and passes whatever testing we've put in place. Or if it doesn't pass, we go back into the process, we fix that code, we run a build, and we test it again. And the key here is how fast can we make that cycle uh, work? There's, only, there's a limit to how quickly we can code. But the purpose of pipelines is to build and test as fast as possible so that our developers are, can really focus on the coding piece of what they're doing. And then the delivery piece is very much the same. Once our code is passing all of its tests, we want to release it. Um, that is to say, to make it to do the packaging so that it can be deployed. And then we would like to deploy it as quickly as possible also. So we want to move it through this pipeline as fast as we possibly can. So that's the goal. That's what we're trying to accomplish when we're working with Bitbucket pipelines. So let's get into it. And this is going to be a pretty detailed and pretty uh, technical discussion. Um, so I'm going to really show you how this works and what some of the capabilities are of Bitbucket pipelines. So what I'm showing you here in this slide in the left is, a, is what the configuration file. This is the key for how we tell Bitbucket what to build and what to deploy. So the configuration file is called bitbucket-pipelines.yml. It is a YAML, Y-A-M-A-L, a, a YAML file. In this, and YAML stands for YAML Ain't Markup Language which is you know, just a clever um, uh, name that some people gave to it. But the idea is that YAML is a way of um, creating a human-readable, easily maintained uh, configuration file. And that's what we've got here. So the key components that we put into this, and you see this in the, on the left-hand side, the first is we have an image. 
Now, everything that happens in Bitbucket pipelines happens in Docker images. And so if you're not familiar with Docker, I'm not going to get into it in any detail, but it is a container uh, system, and it allows you to um, use images or, say, an environment that is specific, has a specific uh, configuration itself. And so what we do in the image is we say, this is the Docker image that I want to use. So we can have Docker images for everything from C Sharp to C++ to Java to C code to Python to Ruby and so on, and all of these different kinds of environments that we might want to use to build our, um, to build our code. Now, then we have the pipeline section. And under pipelines, you'll notice we now have blocks, and that's done in YAML by indenting. Um, so we indent, and that's where default branches and so on come in. They create blocks underneath our list of pipelines. We have a default pipeline. This is what's going to be run if nothing else is matched. And then we have branches and tags, which match to a particular Bitbucket or Git branch and a tag within a Git repository. We can have bookmarks, pull requests is a pipeline that gets run whenever a pull request is created. So we could have a pipeline that basically validates that all of the code that's being requested to be built is actually passing all of its tests. And we can even have custom pipelines that are run by manual control. Now, underneath the default block, you'll see there's a, another block which is called step. And what we have is a series of steps that can be used then to run our builds. And that's our next piece. So here we've got um, a set of, we've got the default uh, pipeline. And under it, we've got two steps. And you can see that here, we've got a dash and then a step, a dash and a step. And these are the steps that we use to actually build our code. In this particular case, what we've said is this step is, has a name, it's build and test. We're going to use a specific image to do this work, and that's, again, a Docker image. And so we can have a different Docker image associated with each step because each step actually runs in its own Docker container. And so for this step, we're running a node.js container, and we're running these commands. We're going to first do an npm install. We're going to then test. We're going to do a run and build. And the output of that are the artifacts. We basically say everything that gets built into the dist uh, directory is going to be an artifact that we're going to be able to use later if we want in our code. And so this step, the second one is the deploy step. It's using Python, so that's its Docker container. It's going to be triggered manually, so that means we're not going to automatically run this step. We're going to have a button in Bitbucket that allows somebody to say, yes, I am ready now to deploy it. And the script that does the deploy is called deploy.py. And because we defined artifacts here, whoops, it, we can use these artifacts in our Python deploy script uh, and deploy them to however we want, whatever our Python script indicates. So that's basically, in a nutshell, those, that's the simple way you set up a pipeline, is you create a step, and the core of this, the real thing that drives it, is this area called the script. And the script is simply a set of command line um, that you run as if you were actually running a node.js from your own command line, npm install test build, or if you're running Python. And by loading the correct Docker image, you have access either to node.js or to Python in, these, in this case. Now, one of the things that we can do with Bitbucket pipelines is we can run steps in parallel. So by default, a steps are going to be run sequentially in the order in which they are listed in our Bitbucket pipelines.yaml file. However, we can add the parallel tag and that indicates that the steps underneath these are run in parallel. And so Bitbucket will actually launch two Docker containers simultaneously to run each of these steps. Now you'll notice in this case, we haven't indicated what image. Somewhere else in the YAML file, we have indicated what our default image is going to be and everything will run within that. But in this case, we've got two steps and they're gonna run two different integration tests. And you can see in this case, we're just running shell files and we've passed in certain uh, parameters, which we can put 
again into our Bitbucket's pipeline's YAML file. Okay, we can also, by the way, define variables and allow us to pass variables in that will then further parameterize our scripts. The next thing we want to mention, and this is really the last piece of the pipelines piece that I'm going to talk about, but the next thing I do want to mention is that you can also, and you may very well need to have external services or such as a database, or it could be access to some other uh, server process that you use for running testing. It may, the server process may have a REST API with certain stubs so you can test a client and so on. You'd set those up by defining them in the def definition section. And in this particular case, we've defined two services, a redis service, which is running this Docker image and has a certain memory configuration, and a MySQL database, which again is running this Docker image, the MySQL 5.7. And here we're passing in variables, MySQL database, we're sending the database name and the password in order to get in. And you'll notice the password is a variable that we will have defined or passed in um, um, externally so that we don't have to store a secret like that within our, actually within our repository where anybody could get to it. So in this particular case, we say that in this step, we now say, I want to make sure that these two services are deployed and running, and then I'm going to run two scripts in Python, one to create the database and then the second one to run tests. And that's what this particular pipeline does for us. So, so this is a way that we can create more complex build and test environments. Now, in addition to doing all this definition, Atlassian has developed about 80 different what they call pipes which are available out of the box. And what these are are custom integrations with other tools or, or environments. Now, a lot of these pipes are used to deploy to other kinds of environments. So some of the examples that I've pulled out for you here, if you were doing AWS or Azure deployments, there are pipes that are predefined that will allow you to quickly deploy your code into the AWS or Azure environment. And so, for, in, for instance, in AWS, you can deploy to an EC2 environment or you can deploy to a Lambda environment. And all of this is being kept under your source code control in Bitbucket. It's being built and tested by Bitbucket pipelines, and then it's being deployed either manually or automatically into that AWS or Azure environment. In addition, you've got Heroku deployments that are supported, again, out of the box. If you're familiar with Artifactory, Artifactory integration is quite nice. This is where your, your um, artifacts like binary images, um, like uh, executables, DLLs, or other link libraries, or other things like that, that you're not, you don't want to maintain in your source code repository, but once they've been built, you want to put them someplace where you can quickly access them, even under version control. Artifactory is one of the more popular systems out of there, out there that does that. And again, Bitbucket pipelines will integrate with Artifactory. For NPM publishing, that is to say Node.js, there's integration with that. And then there are some integration with a number of other tools like SNCC and Sonar Cloud. And these are tools that will scan your source code. So you can say, before I actually build the code, the first thing I want to do is run it through SNCC. And what SNCC does is it maintains a database of known vulnerabilities, known known code vulnerabilities that it can then report to you back and say, you know, here's a security problem that you may have inadvertently uh, snuck into your code. Um, so SNCC and Sonar Cloud both do scanning. And then finally, you have Slack integration, um, again, is another example where, the out, the, where you can be putting messages out to a Slack channel indicating what the status is of builds and deployments and so on. So as you can see, there are 80 different pipes out there that you can explore that you can incorporate into your pipeline. In addition, if you know something a little bit about how to create Docker images, you can create your own pipes, which are simply Docker images that then can be run as part of a pipeline. So 
in a nutshell, that really takes you through Bitbucket pipelines. It's a fairly straightforward process. It is certainly significantly easier to use than Bamboo, um, where Bamboo provides an enormous amount of support for complex builds and deployment scenarios. Bitbucket pipelines gives you a very streamlined um, way to do builds and deployments. So what I want to do is give you now a quick um, view into how this actually works. So I'm going to bring up um, a repository. This is Bitbucket um, Cloud, and I've got a little pipeline example that I have used to demonstrate how pipelines work. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate this is I'm going to change a piece of code um, in a branch, and you're going to see how it builds and what comes out of it when we build. I'm going to break the code, and I'm going to then fix the code. Now, before I get into that, let me quickly bring up the bitbucketpipelines.yaml file so you can just see quickly what it looks like. It's a very, I'm going to try and make it a little larger. And you should be able to see it here. As you can see, we've said we're going to use the uh, Maven image because this is all written in Java, and we're going to use Maven to do our builds. We're going to cache that Maven uh, library once we've downloaded it all. We don't want to download it every time that we need to build something, so we're going to go ahead and cache that. We're going to run this script, which is just a Maven build script, and we're going to say that we want a service. This is a Mongo database, so that's a service that we put out there. It turns out we're not actually going to do anything with it, but it's just there to give you a sense as to how all of this works. So that's our Bitbucket Pipelines file. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. So let's go ahead and actually change something. So I'm going to come back into my source. I'm going to go into the source area. I'm going to go into the pipelines and the main. And what, before I do that, let me create a new branch, which is what I should have done the first, in the first place. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to say create a branch. I'm going to give this branch a, the name demo. And I'm going to go ahead and create it. So now I've got a branch, and the only reason for doing this is that you'll be able to see that when I create the new branch, it actually goes and runs the pipeline for that new branch. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it does. Okay, and up comes our branch, and you'll see that it's currently in progress. We can actually step into it while it's in the, prog in the um, course of building itself. It's running its build setup right now. Now, usually this runs pretty quickly. It sometimes takes as much as 30 seconds or so. As you can see, it took 34 seconds. All five uh, tests passed. We've got a nice green right here. What that tells me is everything ran and everything succeeded. So let's go ahead and break it. Um, so we're going to come into the source. We're going to make sure we're in our new demo branch. So I'm going to go ahead and click on demo. I'm going to come into source. Again, going into Java pipelines, the main.java. Again, making sure I'm in the demo branch. And I'm going to go ahead and edit this. And I can edit it directly in Bitbucket so that I don't have to go out and do it in another library. This is very, very simple code. I have an add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Each one takes two arguments that get passed in. And what I'm going to do is break the subtraction simply by adding a plus one, because I know, that, of course, that's not going to work. It's going to yield the wrong answer. So let's go ahead and put in a little comment that says, break the subtract routine. So we'll go ahead and commit this. And one, now, because of the way Bitbucket Pipelines is set up, it is now automatically building this new commit. And I can go right into the pipeline section, and I can see that it is actually building it. So let's come into pipelines again, which is where we were before. Now, one of the best practices, and I'll mention this while this is coming up, is when I create a branch, I want to see that the branch builds to green, that is successfully, at the outset. I want to know that the branch that I have created um, initially is starting out as a branch that builds successfully. And the reason for that is 
then everything that I do from then on that fails is my fault. And I know that I, everything that I have was correct before. And so that's the key. That's one of the reasons why I always have an initial build of my branch. And then I, this is my break. So let's go ahead and see what happened. When I broke it, you can see that it automatically now tells me here's tests. And it shows me if I click right in here, it's going to show me it expected a one, but what it got was a zero. And so therefore my, um, it shows me that my test did not pass. I've got red. That's a bad thing. Now what I can do quickly is go in and fix this source. So let's go ahead and fix it. And you'll see again that it comes to green as soon as we get it working correctly. So I'm going to go back into my demo branch. I'm going to click into the source. I'm going to get to the pipelines. Edit this one again. And let's go and fix it. And let's take that one out. So we no longer need that. We're going to go ahead and commit it. And we're going to say that I fixed, subtract, routine. We'll go ahead and commit it. And now once it commits, what we'll see is that it goes back to green. And so the value of this, and this is really where I'm going to conclude and take any questions that there may be, is the value of this is that to me as a developer, I have a very fast feedback loop. I know I make my changes to my code and I commit that code and immediately what's happening is Bitbucket is coming through and it's running this pipeline. It's running my, it's building my code. That's, it, it compiles all the code and then it runs the tests against that code. And it's giving me a very fast feedback loop. And I don't have to go in and manually run anything. It all happens all by itself. So as you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and pick the demo branch. Here was our initial build, that was successful. Here's our second build, this is the one that failed. And this is our final build and it's successful again. And as you can see, the first time through it took 34 seconds because it needed to download various pieces of information about Maven. The second time it took 15 seconds and the final time it was only taking eight seconds because most of what it needed had already been built and didn't need to rebuild anything. So it's very fast. It gives me that quick feedback. And one of the things I'm not going to show you, but it also allows me to integrate with JIRA. So if I'm working out of JIRA, I can quickly see what is the status of all of the commits, the pull requests, and the builds that I have done in Bitbucket pipelines. So that's what I wanted to show you. I want to show you how really simple it is to set these things up. It's very straightforward. It's very fast. It's a very lightweight system um, that could provide a lot of value. So with that, Dick, I'm going to turn it back over to you. I don't know if we have any questions, but I'm happy to answer anything that somebody may have. Yeah, thank you, Derek. Great job. And now would be a good time to ask a question. Remember, there's a Q&A box, and you can go ahead and type your question in there, and we'll get to it. Uh, Derek, one of the things that I, I was thinking about when you went through this is that Atlassian has has a nice uh, integrated solution, and you mentioned Jira at the end, but there's other other products out there like GitHub and uh, GitLab and, and so on. Can you can you just easily swap in and swap out Git, GitHub or GitLab instead of Bitbucket? Is it is it that easy? And if and if so, why would you want to do that if, if you've got Bitbucket here already doing a good job? Well, if you're already using Bitbucket, you certainly aren't. You, there'd be no sure. point in switching in GitLab or GitHub um, uh, to do that. I mean, they don't provide any value. In fact, in some ways, they provide less value than you're going to get out of Bitbucket um, because the pipeline capability is something that is much t more tightly integrated than it is with GitLab or GitHub, though I know that those systems are also looking at trying to create them. Um, so there would be no point in, in swapping it out if you're already using Bitbucket for that. Okay, okay. And how about uh, integration to testing systems? How, how does that work? Yeah. Oh, so there it has integration to some testing systems, but also you can make calls out if you, you know, to a test system or a test harness in order, and, and you can load up test 
Docker images, which will allow you then to build your system and then in another step load up a test, a Docker image that may be running something like a cucumber or an octopus that will run through various tests for you and report out on the results. So that is certainly something that you can do with Bitbucket pipelines. So yeah, I've, I've heard of other testing systems like Zephyr, uh, QAS, yes. I think, which is now part of uh, Trisensis, yeah, Zephyr, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Zephyr, Zephyr, X-Ray, Q-Test, and some of the other ones aren't really test systems so much as test orchestrators or test yeah. management. Um, to really run the tests, you need a, a different tool, and that's where something like an octopus comes in to play or a Selenium or one of those comes into play. Those are actually uh, executing the tests where Zephyr and X-Ray are keeping track of the test results and the and um, connecting those test results to Jira tickets. Yeah, and I, and I guess a lot of companies still are doing a lot of the testing manually. They, in other words, they're writing their own scripts. They might have a number of testers, and that's all they do, right? Is they write scripts to test uh, different parts of the code. Is that is that how that works? And that these other tools that would help automate that. Yeah, the other yeah. tools help automate it. We want, we would like very much, um, and I say we in the sense of being um, a DevOps. Um, per, you know, looking at it from a DevOps perspective, we would like very much to automate as much of the testing as possible. We want to really elevate our testers from simply being people who click buttons on a keyboard and move and, and move a mouse around to those who can write automated tests and really think hard about out of the box kinds of ways to test the code. That's gonna elevate the value of your testers. If they're looking at, if they're responsible for the automation and not simply pressing the, the buttons on a mouse in order to test whether or not you get the right result from a particular uh, uh, GUI. Right. Well, the whole idea that I, I mentioned a little bit when we started with this whole digital transformation effort that's ongoing ever, everywhere is agility at speed. So in other words, if you're given a deadline to get a piece of code out and maybe it's a, something as simple as getting the website updated or maybe it's more complex uh, software development effort that you're working on, speed matters. And I, I think that it's important to, to take a look at some of these tools that really help you meet that objective. Yet. Absolutely. So, I couldn't agree more. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. There's a there's a question that just uh, just came in here and uh, says here. It looks like pipelines can do a ton, but what are its limitations? Yeah. Ah, that's a, now that's a really good question. So pipelines okay. can't do a ton. Um, however, it is it, it it is not a replacement for bamboo, and the, and so it's important to keep that in mind. One of the probably the biggest limitation, and the one that I think is going to be, you know, something that has to be fixed down the road, is that it will not build Windows or Mac. Um, uh, projects. You can't do a .NET um, in right now in Bitbucket pipelines. So if you're doing something that is, you know, primarily if you're, you can use Bitbucket pipelines for doing a lot of Linux things, but if you're moving outside the Linux environment, you're going to need to look at using Bamboo. Um, another thing it can't, it does not do well is it's not going to handle easily a lot of the more complex build um, requirements. And so while, you know, if there's not a Docker image out there that already exists to do your builds and you're not interested in trying to create your own, um, you may want to look at Bamboo, which has a lot more the, the ability not only to build in Docker images, but to build in um, native OS environments. Um, it doesn't have quite the same level of capability on the deployment plans. You have to really build a lot of your own deployment scripts. And if you're deploying um, outside of some fairly straightforward um, areas, you may find, again, that Bamboo is necessary to handle those deployments. So there are some limitations in that sense. Um, but if you are able to, if you're working in an AWS or an Azure environment and you're deploying into one of the, their Linux areas or you're going to, you just want to build the code, test it, and then download it or, um, to a, uh, through an FTP or something like that, I think Bitbucket Pipelines works very, very nicely. Okay. So, so Bamboo is, is more of a, a, a deployment tool and Bitbucket is really a, repository with the Bitbucket pipeline, she's doing some of that automation for you. Is that kind of the gist of it? Well, I would say I would say more that Bamboo is the enterprise level uh, CI CD tool. Bitbucket okay. pipelines is a nice tool for smaller groups, smaller projects. Okay, I got it. 
Okay. All right. Well, that looks like that. Uh, that's it in terms of questions. So I think we've pretty much uh, come to the end here. I wanted to say thank you, uh, Derek. I don't know if you had any other closing thoughts or anything before we we kind of uh, sign off here. No, yeah, no, I think I, I think I think I have I've said everything that I want to say, and I encourage you know people to get in, you know in touch with me directly if they want to learn more about pipelines or any of the other Atlassian tools. All right, and is there one final PowerPoint slide? I don't know if we because we sometimes put the phone see. number. Yeah, yeah, I we put the we phone number have... up there. So just in case there's anybody out there that is interested there in how to how to Questions. contact uh, uh, Rightstar, you can see you can get get us through phone for through email or through the website. So. Anyway, uh, thanks again, uh, everybody, for your time and attendance today. We really appreciate that you chose uh, this uh, 37 minutes or so to spend with us. Uh, you know where to go if you need uh, more information or if you'd like to see a private demo or if you have any other questions. So please be in touch. So again, Derek, thanks for a great job. And everybody else, uh, again, we appreciate uh, your time. Signing off uh, now from Rightstar. See you all later and uh, have a good rest of the day. So long, everybody. Thank you.